Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. One side of a square is increased by 8 meters, and the adjacent side is decreased by 2 meters. The result is a rectangle is formed whose perimeter is 40 meters. So what we want to do here is find the length of the square. All right, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take one more quick look at the problem. All right, so we have a square, and we're going to take this square and we're going to uh, turn it into a rectangle. And the way we're going to do that is the square, uh, one side of the square is going to be increased by 8 meters, and the adjacent side is going to be decreased by 2 meters. So we have this rectangle that is formed whose perimeter, the perimeter of the rectangle, is 40 meters. And the question is, we want to find the length of the original square. All right, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 7 meters. All right, now if you got this right, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving basic algebra problems that involve the perimeter. Okay, so you, of course you have to know what the perimeter is. Because if you don't know what the perimeter is, you're not going to be able to solve this problem. And uh, the easiest way to solve this problem is using algebra. Now, if you didn't use algebra and you still got this right, that is fantastic. But you don't want to be afraid of algebra. And I don't like to say that, hey, solve this algebra word problem. Uh, people just typically are very afraid of algebra word problems. Like, I don't like doing algebra word problems. You know, it makes my hair stand up. Well, it's not that bad. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and see how easy it is to solve this problem using algebra. All right, so first things first. First, we have this lovely problem. Always use the rule of three, which is read the problem at least three times before you do anything. Now, of course, I've already read the problem a couple of times here, but if you don't understand uh, some problem that you're dealing with, you know, raise your hand if you're a student, ask your teacher, or, you know, uh, do whatever research, look up a word. You know, you got to be clear on what the problem is, the information in the problem, and what the question is, right? So here we have a square. It's turning into a rectangle because we're increasing and decreasing the sides, and we want to find the length of the original square. All right, so how can we approach this problem? Well, you always want to try to model a problem. It's always the best way to go. Now, if you can visualize the problem, that's even better because if you can see the problem, oftentimes you can see the solution. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at my little sketch of what's going on. Now, hopefully you uh, kind of was thinking in terms of something like this. Now, if you are not, um, you know, a, a great artist, you know, you don't have to be, you know, uh, super artistic <laughs> to, to come up with basic math, sketch, uh, math sketches or figures or drawings to help you solve a problem. But what you want to do is be somewhat neat and get in the habit or try to, uh, you know, get better at modeling problems, right? So if you're afraid of, you know, drawing sketches or figures, don't be, you know, um, everyone's different and there's different ways to model this kind of situation. So feel free to kind of have your own personal style uh, to solve a problem. All right, so here is my style. I ha we have this square, right? So I don't know the lengths of this square. Of course, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to say, well, the, the sides of the square is x. Now, of course, all four sides of the square are equal. Now, what's happening is that we're increasing one side of this rect or the square right here, one side is going to be increased by 8, and another side is going to be decreased by 2. 
So we're going to add 8 to one side, and then we're going to subtract 2 from that side. So obviously, we're going to end up with a rectangle. So here is our rectangle. And of course, we have some lovely um, uh, variable expressions that represent the length and width of this particular rectangle that is formed. Now, we also know that the perimeter is equal to 40 meters. Well, hopefully, a lot of you are saying, oh, yes, Mr. U2 Math Man, I know exactly what to do. Uh, maybe we should just kind of add up all four sides because that is the perimeter. And set that equal to 40, solve for x, and then that will basically tell us uh, the answer uh, to this question. Well, that is absolutely correct if you're thinking in those terms. So let's go ahead and uh, start that process now. All right, so the perimeter is the sum total around any figure, right? Could be a triangle. If you add up this side, this side, and this side, uh, you know, the distance around a figure is a perimeter. So any figure, it could be a rectangle, it could be a square. Now, here is a pop uh, quiz question for you. What is the perimeter of a circle? Now, some of you might be saying, perimeter of a circle? I never even heard of that, Mr. U2 Math Man. Well, you never heard of the perimeter of a circle because that's actually called the circumference. It's the distance around. So we use a different word when we're talking about um, circles or other figures, but basic, basically polygon type of figures, uh, you know, or irregular shapes, things like this, you can easily find the perimeter by simply adding up the lengths of all the sides of that figure. So in this case, uh, what we have is a rectangle, right? So that's a very important uh, word here because a rectangle, there, you know, by definition, you need, you need to say, oh yeah, I know what a rectangle is. It's something that looks like that. Well, what does a rectangle, what are the properties of the rectangle that uh, we need to understand? Well, opposite sides are congruent. So in other words, this length is the same as this length. So in other words, over here, this is x plus 8. And then these sides over here are the same. So over here, this is x minus 2 as well. So we have two x minus 2s and two x plus 8s. If we add all these up, we get the perimeter. So we can kind of write the perimeter uh, this way. So the perimeter is equal to 2 times uh, x plus 8 plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, of course, we're told that the perimeter is equal to 40 meters. So what we want to do is set uh, this expression right here equal to 40. So what we're looking at is this right here. Okay, so 2 times x plus 8 uh, plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 40. So now the question is, can you solve this equation? Okay, so hopefully you can, and if you can't, well, I'm going to show you those steps right now. But first, I'm going to show you this, which, of course, is an invitation to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help uh, because my goal is to help as many people as I can. Now, I've been um, on YouTube for well over 10 plus years. I posted, I think I'm getting pretty close to 3,000 videos. And um, I think I'm like at 86 million views. I kind of don't really uh, check these stats all the time, but from time to time, I definitely look at these figures and I look at the subscriber count pretty closely because that's an indication of my channel growing. And that, to me, means that I'm reaching more people, I'm helping more people. See, as a math teacher, I'm trying to have the biggest possible classroom as possible. Now, you know, in a physical classroom, it's actually you know, very tough to handle a lot of students because you can't really give them, you know, that kind of individual attention, answer their questions. And, you know, of course, I can't talk to 86 million uh, people. But what I try to do is break down math concepts in a very simplistic uh, way and give a lot of encouragement. The big part of my channel and what I do is, um, you know, really give people hope to not give up on learning math. Okay, that's a huge part of learning math is basically changing your mindset. Okay, so for those of you out there that are struggling in math, they're like, I'm bad at math. The first thing you need to do, the number one thing you need to do is change your mindset that, uh, you know what, I think I can actually learn this stuff. You absolutely can. So you got to stop, uh, you know, have this kind of ne negative self-talk about your ability to learn math. You can learn this stuff, but it takes work, takes effort, and it takes great instruction. Now, if you need help in anything mathematics, you know, from uh, basic math to more advanced math, check out my full main math courses. Uh, I'll leave the links to uh, those courses in the description. But let's go ahead and finish up this problem, which effectively is solving this lovely linear equation. All right, so 2 times x plus 8 plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 40. 
So what is the first thing that we need to do? Well, anytime you have uh, parentheses like this, you need to apply the distributive property. All right, now, if you're a bit confused on what's going on here, this is stuff that I would teach like in my pre-algebra or Algebra 1 course, but let's go ahead and apply the distributive property right now. Okay, so we're gonna take this two, multiply it by x, that gives us two x right here. Two times eight is 16, plus two times x right here is two x, and then two times this two is negative four is equal to 40. All right, so what is the next move? Well, the next move is to combine like terms. So we have uh, these two x's right here, and then we can combine these numbers right there. We wanna clean up the left-hand side of the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, so 2x plus 16 plus 2x minus 4 is uh, equal to 2x, and 2x is 4x, and 16 minus 4 is 12. So we got 4x plus 12 is equal to 40. All right, so these steps that I'm showing are the same steps that you want to take when you are solving a problem. Effectively, especially when you're solving linear equations, your work should kind of look like an ice cream cone. You're like, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube man, man? Ice cream? You know, well, I'm talking about an ice cream cone. So in other words, like this, right? So you're taking a step and you're kind of whittling the problem down until you finally get to your solution. But uh, if your work is going from like, uh, oh, here's the problem, here's the solution, your teacher's going to be, uh, I don't know, you know, I can't really tell what you, um, what steps you actually take. They're more interested in all this stuff right here, okay? They want to see your work in progress. So make sure you're neat, you write out each step. That's a big part of math. All right, so 4x plus 12 is equal to 40. What do we need to do? We have to subtract 12 from both sides of the equation, and we're going to get 4x is equal to 28. And lastly, to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 4. So we get x is equal to 7. Now remember, we are dealing with the units of measure uh, meters, right? So x is equal to 7 meters. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's go back to our original kind of setup here. So remember the variable x represents the side of this square. Okay, so that was the question. What is the side of the square? It's not 7. It's 7 meters. All right, so hopefully this little algebra word problem makes sense. And if it doesn't, it, well, you know, it's something that you can work on and get better on. You can always improve, right? So the thing about it is, uh, I, I think that the main thing is, a lot of people who struggle in math or who want to learn math, they want the fast way, right? They're like, hey, look, just give me the quick, easy version, uh, you know, because we live in this, uh, you know, world with so much technology, everything comes pretty quickly to us, right? We just go on our cell phones or we just be on a computer, hit a button, and boom, you know, you uh, instantly have what you want. Well, uh, learning a skill doesn't work that way. You're going to have to, you know, put in the work just like, you know, us old timers, you know, uh, 50, 60 years old, whatever the case, it doesn't make a difference whether you're young or old. If you want to develop a skill, you're going to have to put in the work. So one problem at a time. And uh, the most important thing is to have a good attitude. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.